All right, here we go as we continue our taxonomy and systematics unit. We're moving into the kingdom plantae, obviously talking about the plants. So as we move forward, let's look at where we've been, all right? Let's go to our previous discussions here. We've talked about eubacteria. We've talked about archaeobacteria. These, obviously, the prokaryotic kingdoms. All right, moving our way through. Um, we moved on to the protists, the kingdom protists. So we talked about how diverse they are, uh, and how five proposed candidate kingdoms have been suggested within protists. Perhaps they need to be split up further. Perhaps they're too diverse to simply be one kingdom. So we've got the Archaeozoa, the Euglenozoa, the Alveolata, Stramonopola, Chlorophyta. And here branching off the Chlorophyta, which are the green algae, are the plants. So here we are. Uh, this is our origin. We have our origin in the green algae. We're diverging at this point. We're going to look a little bit at um, how we diverged, how plants moved onto land, um, what had to happen for that to be possible, and we're going to look at plant phylogeny as well. So, here we go. As far as plant colonization of land goes, they had to make some adaptations to their anatomy. All right, first of all, they needed some roots. Uh, they needed some way to, um, to obtain nutrients, to obtain water. Um, if we look at the earliest plants, if we look at the, um, the caraphytes, if we look at the mosses, they don't have roots, okay? So they don't have ways, they don't have methods of, of transporting nutrients and water um, up through a stem. So they can't be very large. They can't be tall. Um, in order to be tall, in order to be large, they had to have vascular tissue. Here we are. Well, we're talking about vascular tissue, and here's um, a, a diagram of vascular tissue. You can see here's kind of a cross section of a stem. Vascular tissue runs the length of a stem, and it transports things much like arteries, uh, arterioles, and, and veins transport things in us. So they run the length, as you can see here in, in our cross section. And they, they transport water, they transport nutrients, they transport food. When we're talking about this, we're talking about uh, xylem and phloem for the vascular tissue. Xylem transports water, phloem transports food. There's our vascular tissue. Here's xylem, here's phloem transporting water, transporting food. Plants needed to prevent desiccation. They didn't want to dry out once they've moved out of, out of water and onto land. So they, they developed a waxy covering called a cuticle, which protects them, um, made of a lipid. They also developed stomates. Here's a, a close-up view of stomates or stomata, little openings or pores in the leaf, which allow for gas exchange. All right? They allow for CO2 to go in and oxygen to be released during photosynthesis. So these stomata uh, are necessary for gas exchange. You don't want them closed. You don't want CO2 to build up, or you don't want oxygen to build up, excuse me. Uh, we'll talk about that more when we talk about photosynthesis. But anatomically, these things needed to happen. How about reproductively? Well, there were some strategies that they were employing, such as spores. The earliest plants had them. Spores are, are single cellular. Uh, they can become an entire new individual. Um, sometimes um, seeds are more efficient. Plants move to seeds. Uh, flowers even more so. All right. It's interesting that you can see the evolution of flowers right along with the evolution of plants, or uh, of animals, excuse me. As there were more animals, um, there were more uh, methods of movement for pollen. So we had pollinators. If you have insects, you have ways to move your pollen, to move your seed to other plants. So as there were more animals, we had more flowers to attract those animals, to attract those pollinators, and transport the gametes where they needed to go. Here's our animals. We always had water and wind, but now with animals, um, perhaps they can travel over longer distances. Um, we aren't going to talk about the, the alteration, alternation of generations in this screencast as far as gametophyte and sporophyte generations go. That'll be another, genera uh, another screencast. But these reproductive strategies as far as seeds and gamete transport were very, very important for the evolution of plants, for them to be more um, diverse, to be more complex, 
uh, in their phylogeny and that's what we're going to look at next and finally in this screencast we're going to look at plant phylogeny where we've been where they've been and uh, and where they've moved to so if we look down at the bottom we're, they're coming from the chlorophytes they're coming from the green algae uh, they have a plant uh, cell wall made of cellulose that's what the plants have in common cellulose in their cell wall um, not chitin okay chitin if they have chitin in the cell wall it's going to be a fungus or or perhaps uh, an animal like a lobster or an insect. These have cellulose for protection. Uh, they have chlorophyll as a main um, peg pigment for photosynthesis. And as we move forward, we move from these green algae, which were photosynthetic, but not as plant-like as, say, this outgroup called the carophytes. Carophytes very primitive. Um, aquatic plant phylum. All right, we're talking about maybe 475 million years ago. We've got this divergence. All right, we have our carophytes. Now, this next divergence, if we put it right here, we have the development of vascular tissue. So everything to the right now has xylem and phloem. This outcropping along with the carophytes don't have vascular tissue. You can probably tell here these are the bryophytes which is moss. Since moss doesn't have vascular tissue, doesn't have xylem and phloem to transport water and nutrients over long distances, they have to be very small, very low to the ground um, they have to live where it's moist because they tra can't transport water. So we've got the mosses here. Also, no leaves, no stems, no roots. Nothing that's going to complicate things because they don't have xylem or phloem. All right, moving on, we move to our next divergence. We're looking at seeds. All right, so here we have the first seeded plants. We have seeds. Up until now, we're still working with spores. All right, and here. You can tell by the picture, we're talking about the ferns. Okay. Um, once again, an old, uh, archaic phylum of, of plants. No seeds, use spores. Moving forward, we have seeds. Now, how are the seeds um, on the plant? Are they exposed? Well, in these particular um, plants, they are. In the gymnosperms, they are exposed gymnosperms meaning naked seeds. Those are your evergreens, okay, your pine trees. Whereas here, they are hidden. Okay, these are the angiosperms. Hidden seeds. So as we can see, as we're moving forward, we're developing tissue, we're developing seeds, we're being more effective at, um, at reproduction. What are we doing with our seeds? Well, either um, they're exposed or we're hiding them within some kind of fruiting body um, or flowering body, such as the angiosperm. So we can see the progression from algae up to a very complex flowering organism which seeks out insects and other pollinators to spread the pollen. Um, so they're moving forward, onward, and upward, so we'll keep going as well through our taxonomy unit.